Hello everybody, uh, Miss Emmanuel here. We are going to um, look at creating a leaflet all about Kinva to attract people to come to Kinva, the tourists who usually come to visit us, um, particularly in the summertime, thinking about when the lockdown is over. How are we going to promote the village and encourage people to come back and visit us? So I have a PowerPoint that we're going to go through in a moment. It explains how to really interest people in coming to Kinva and using all the persuasive techniques and skills that we can pack into it to make sure that they want to, to come. You're going to use all of the expert knowledge you've gained about Kinva throughout this topic and don't forget you can include some pictures, some photographs or some drawings. Uh, there is a leaflet template for you on the Google Drive. If you don't have access to, access to a printer that's fine. You can just uh, take a piece of A4 paper and fold it, call it tri-folding, fold it three ways and then use that. We've done that plenty of times in school. Let's have a look at the PowerPoint. So this is to think about writing persuasively. So you'll be able to understand the purpose and features of persuasive texts. So what is the purpose of a persuasive text? It's to try to get people to do what you want them to do. So people who work in advertising and marketing, uh, advertising and PR, particularly public relations, they're always trying to get us to buy things, visit places, do things that we may or may not want to do uh, to encourage us to participate. Typical persuasive texts include adverts, charity leaflets and travel brochures. Year six, I think you'll be particularly good at this because I know you've done a travel brochure already this year. So persuasive language, there are different things that you can do. There's something called the rule of three. That means you repeat something three times to make the reader pay attention. You might say it's an exciting, thrilling and a roller coaster of a trip. So you've got exciting, thrilling and a roller coaster. You could use emotive language, powerful words that steer, stir emotion in the reader. So helpless, heartless, barbaric, etc. to make people feel emotionally connected to it. Hopefully something they really want to be involved in. Rhetorical questions are questions that don't need an answer, but make the reader think. So if you were trying to persuade someone to look after um, dogs, um, perhaps somewhere where they were not being taken care of, you could say, could you let these poor dogs starve to death? If you were perhaps trying to get people to donate to a, a, a charity looking after stray dogs. Statistics, that means data, that means facts, percentages, numbers. So providing evidence to prove to the reader that what you're saying is true. You might say something like 99% of customers agree that Kimber is the best uh, best village in the West Midlands. We may have to exaggerate here a little bit because you're not going to go out and do a survey, but just getting the idea of using statistics and data in your persuasive arguments. Personal pronouns, using you and we to get the reader involved. If you talk directly to the reader saying you, then that's making the reader feel engaged with what they're saying and imagery, creating a picture in the reader's head. So that's using descriptive writing and descriptive language. OK, so let's see if you can find any of the persuasive techniques in this ghostly manner text. Let's read this together. And then as I'm reading, try to see if you can find any of those techniques. Ghostly manner. Fancy a holiday with a difference. Come and experience a most unusual holiday at ghostly manor. Could anything be more exciting? The 16th century manor is teeming with the oldest, scariest and most infamous ghosts in the country. You have to come and experience this for yourselves. Open during the coldest months of winter, we offer special rates and action-packed weekend haunts. Customer comments show that 95% of our guests leave Ghostly Manor as satisfied customers. We doubt you will find a holiday more exhilarating, fearsome and spine-tingling at any time of the year. All bedrooms are built to the highest specifications, with creaking floors and creepy portraits and mirrors on all walls. There are rooms to see suit even the most daring of our holiday makers. So what are you waiting for? Come to Ghostly Manor and enjoy a memorable hair-raising experience. OK, pause the video for a moment. Go back and look at what those um, different techniques are and see if you can find them in this text. Right, how did you get on? Did you find the rule of three? We've got oldest, scariest and most infamous. Um, and we've also got, uh, I think there was something else. 
mm, maybe you found it, I can't just see it at the moment, but rule of three there. Um, emotive language. Uh, let's have a think about the emotive language. An exhilarating trip. Fearsome. So it's quite emotional. If you want exhilarating, if you're a daredevil, if you like things to be exciting, it's exhilarating, fearsome and spine tingling. Oh, there it is as well, that rule of three. So using those emotive words in a, in a list. Rhetorical questions. Questions where they don't expect you to answer, but they are they're trying to get the reader to really become engaged with it. So fancy a holiday with a difference? Could anything be more exciting? Those are rhetorical questions. Here's another one at the bottom. So what are you waiting for? Gosh, if you like all these things, what are you waiting for? You must sign up and uh, book immediately. Statistics. We've got something here. 95% of our guests leave ghostly man as satisfied customers. So that's nearly everybody leaves happy. Personal pronouns, the you and the we. Um, quite a lot of uh, use of you in the questions. Um, so what are you waiting for um, you have to come and experience this for yourself we doubt it's very personal they are directly in talking and appealing to us and imagery they talk about creaking floors and creepy portraits so to really make it the most exciting and engaging thing possible i hope you found most of those so you might need to do a mind map of the brochure for kinver so thinking of Kimber, I would start by thinking of a, de a de description of it to describe Kimber and, the, and what it looks like. Imagery of a beautiful and exciting place. That's where we can use some of that imagery to draw people in. You might like to talk about the attractions, what people can do when they get here. They've got the Kimber Edge, they've got the rock houses, there's the children's park, there's the canal which is lovely for walks, the river lovely for walks and picnics, the churches if you like historic buildings, and anything else you can think of. Uh, restaurants, cafes, include the names of restaurants and cafes. Actually, I haven't put in their pubs, but also don't forget there's places like the White Hart um, as well. Think about the prices. You may or may not know them. You could look online or you could, if you want to make them up, what they serve. Again, you could look at their menus online and a bit of a, a description of each place. You could also talk about takeaways, couldn't you? Some of the uh, fish and chip shops and things. Travellers' recommendations. Now, you might have to make this up a quote from people who have visited, positive ones only. So you could write your own quote um, or use something that somebody else has said to you. So you could put, uh, Jean, uh, read, a visitor to Kinver over Easter Bank holiday, said it was the most peaceful and beautiful space in the West Midlands. You could also, if you want to do a little feature on the events that are uh, take place in Kinver, the Kinver Country Fair, which I'm sure many of you would have been to in the past, the Christmas tree switch on, and sometimes there's activities up on Kinver Edge that you may know of. So that's your mind map, that's all the sort of sections and paragraphs that you might like to include. Okay, so as I've said, um, there is, that's just the mind map there again for you to have a look at. So you, you've got your template or your leaflet, lots of sections, lots of pictures, an eye-catching front page. You might like to include a map on the back so people know where to go. All right, uh, good luck with that, children. All of your teachers would really love to see some of your examples of what you've created there. So good luck with it.